Before Demi Lovato and Selena Gomez were both multi-platinum recording artists, before Demi was hunting for aliens in the desert, or whatever they do in that show, I haven't watched it, there was an era in my childhood where the two were Disney Channel stars, and they were best friends. They were inseparable. They were making music together. They were in shows together. They had a weird online beef with Miley Cyrus together. I still don't know what that was about, but I wish influencer boxing existed at the time, dude. I would love to see them in the ring together. How crazy would that be? But most importantly, they made a movie together, and that movie is called Princess Protection Program. We're gonna be watching this movie today, and even though it's not very good, in fact, it's pretty darn bad, I think that it plays an important role in marking this moment in history where these two stars were as big as they were. This was also like peak Disney Channel original movie era. At least it was for me, because when this came out, I was a teenager, and everything was better when I was a teenager. <laughs> If you played me that beginning riff with a little like yeah, and asked me which Disney Channel original movie I thought it was, I would say all of them. I think that's how they all start. In this movie, Selena Gomez plays a girl named Carter. She works at her dad's bait shop and the movie opens up with a popular boy from school coming to pick up some worms. Because this movie takes place in Louisiana. How much? Uh, no, 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 no charge. Great. One of my biggest complaints with this movie is that the, it seems like they just like didn't try at all to build the world that they're in. This movie takes place in Louisiana. Selena Gomez is supposed to be playing this like southern fisher girl who works at her dad's bait shop, but she didn't alter any of her mannerisms. She was kind of just like, mm, okay, tomboy, Louisiana. I'm thinking she would act a little something like Selena Gomez, baby, because that's what you're getting. In fact, it kind of seems like whoever wrote this movie decided that it was going to be set in Louisiana without ever having once been to Louisiana. It's like they just randomly picked a place. Nobody in this movie has a southern accent. Carter works at a bait shop, but we never see anybody actually fishing. It's kind of like this movie was written by AI that's only ever heard of Louisiana. The popular boy picks up worms at the bait shop and then goes to school from there and just takes the worms to school. me, pal. The classic cool parent in every Disney Channel original movie. You know, I always felt kind of jealous when I saw kids in movies have relationships like this with their parents, where they're like all buddy-buddy and they're really good friends and they've got a cool secret handshake. But now I'm kind of like, I wonder what that would have done to me to have a parent that instead of trying to like hug me would just be like, all right, bro, later. I'll see you tomorrow, bro. You're like, dad, do we have health insurance? And he's just like, I don't know, bro. I only get health insurance for my kids. And you're my pal, right? Anyways, good luck with those, uh, what did you say they were? Shingles? That sucks, dude. Okay, so they're not trying very hard at all with the whole Louisiana thing, but Danny's character, Rosalina, or Rosie, is from a small, made-up Spanish-speaking country. Maybe they went a little bit harder building that world. Princesa de Costa Luna. <laughs> and you're walking? And walking? Okay, he's got an accent. He's still speaking English, but he has an accent. Dimitri, my coronation is one month away. And Rosie does not. Of course not. That would be confusing for the viewers. They'd be like, I thought Demi Lovato was in this movie. Who's this girl with an accent? Things start to get spicy in this movie when Rosie is doing a practice of her coronation where she's gonna become queen of this whole country. Right now she's just princess. And during the rehearsal, this general shows up and just hurls a sword at the princess's head. Let us set forward and be heard. I don't know if he was aiming for the crown or if he was aiming for her head and he just missed, but either way, this is not good. Costa Luna and Costa Estrella are two tiny countries who must unite and stand together against the world. So this general is from another tiny made up Spanish speaking country and he's here to take over this other tiny made up Spanish speaking country. Chaos ensues, fights break out, this guy slips in chocolate. It's weird how there are certain like recurring themes in Disney Channel original movies. I did not think that like getting covered in chocolate fondue would be one of them, but it's happened in two movies now. I guess dude slipping in chocolate fondue is just the perfect way to take an otherwise horrifying situation a military coup where your family may be murdered and give it a comedic little twist. Huh, things can't be that bad if a guy's covered in chocolate. So here comes this guy to the rescue. This is actually Carter's dad. I know you probably didn't recognize him because when he met Rosie, he wasn't like, yo, what's up, bro? How's it going? Found it. He's part of the Princess Protection Program and he was sent here to protect Rosie. And in my opinion, 
I think he should have sprung into action a little bit sooner. He was there the entire time and didn't do anything to help the princess until after the general had already thrown a sword at the princess's head. He's like, hold on a second. I gotta see how this plays out. I don't wanna do anything too hasty. As a sword is exiting the back of the princess's skull. Okay, interesting. He doesn't even take his own sword out until everyone else is already like enthralled in a battle. Who are you? Where are you taking me? I'm here to protect you, but you need to trust me. But what about my mother? She's gonna meet us, but we need to hurry. So the general takes Rosie away from the fight. He takes her down these stairs where you can see out the window and it's just like LA. <laughs> it just looks like a regular city street. So I guess they just filmed this at like a Hilton or something. And they get on a helicopter and they fly away to a safe location. Okay guys, I gotta be honest. Immediately, I don't really know if I'm rooting for this princess. She was about to become queen of an entire country. Uh, was she elected by the people? No. She was not. But yes, please, let's make an entire movie about protecting the bloodline of the throne. Making sure that the royal family stays genetically pure. Let's make a whole movie about that. Okay, to be fair, not that I think that this 16 year old should be murdered over the whole thing. Obviously, that's not what I'm saying. It's just, you know, who is this general? What are his policies? I don't know anything about him, except that he's got a great arm. Let me hear his plans for the two countries and then I'll decide who I'm rooting for. But the princessa is only a girl, madame. She will contact her mother, and when she does, I will bring her back to Costa Luda, where she will rot with her mother in a tiny dirt cell. Okay, well, I guess this guy actually is pretty mean. I can see why they made him the villain. So now you're probably thinking, holy cow, dude, these are some insanely high stakes for a Disney Channel movie. A military coup? The queen is being held captive? This guy got chocolate on his clothes? I know, but they only get higher from here. Rosie is taken to this secret underground base, which is the headquarters for the Princess Protection Program. It's like a top secret organization. It, they keep princesses safe. They're funded by all the world's royal families. And Rosie gets this whole spiel about what they do. This is Princess Shanta. Last January, Major Mason rescued her from a politically motivated coup. We have placed her where no one will find her. Just say she's a little farther north than she's used to. Is she with? people or like near any civilization at all. It looks like they just threw her into a frozen wasteland. How's that a help? She, uh, she can't be the queen from there. No one will ever find her there. Not even us. We lost her. What about me? Where are you sending me? Nowhere yet. First you must go through stage three, transformation. The crazy thing is, they never mention this in the movie, but there are so many princesses in this program. There's gotta be like a hundred just in this base get, that are like getting ready to be sent to a different location. Is there some kind of like world war going on? Why are there so many princesses? There's, I don't even think there's that many princesses in the world. How many princesses are there? Let me Google that. Okay, well this article says, meet all the official princesses of the world and there's 51 photos each of one princess. So I'm guessing there's like 51 princesses in the world. There's gotta be like most of them. They're all in danger. This is a terrifying world they live in. So Rosalina's not sold on this thing right away. She's like, this is weird. In my head, I'd be thinking you guys obviously aren't doing a very good job if literally every princess in the world is under attack. Maybe be a little more proactive with your approach instead of only helping after a, a spear has already been thrown at the princess. Princess, I'm sorry, but General Kane has taken control of your country and assumed command of its government. But I must go back. And you will as soon as we find a legal way to remove him. A legal way to remove him? He tried to kill the princess. How about arrest him? General Kane is hoping you'll contact her so we'll know where to find you. What if he does find me? He'll make an example of you by sending you to prison or a work farm. <laughs> oh my God, this is so dark. Remember when Demi's character in Camp Rock just wanted to rock out at Camp Rock? In this movie, she's like, I hope my mom and I don't die in a work camp. You're going to camp work. What? Lucky for Rosie, she's not getting sent to Antarctica like that one girl. She's getting sent to high school. That's my impression of probably what the trailer for this movie said. Um, who are you? Rosa, uh, Rosie. Okay, so what are you doing here? Oh, Major Mason gave me this room. That's right, Rosie is sent to live with General Mason at their house with Carter. And when Carter meets Rosie, she is very confused. Major Mason gave me this room. He did, huh? Carter, I didn't have a choice. She doesn't trust anybody but me. Yeah, I know the feeling. I'm pretty confused about what this guy's role is. He's like a general in the princess protection program and he's never helped protect a princess before. Either way, Carter is not taking kindly to this whole hanging out with a princess thing. You have made other sleeping arrangements? Look, the room is not yours, it's ours. 
we share it. She's pretty cold to her immediately. See, if that was me, I'd be being a lot nicer to the literal princess of a country. You know, she's got a lot of power and if this whole coup doesn't go through, she's gonna become queen. And when she does, you're gonna wanna be friends with her, all right? This is like that show Undercover Boss. They always get like a gift at the end for being nice to the boss, if they're nice to the boss. But you know the entire time that she's the boss. Don't you think at the end of this whole thing, she's gonna be like, oh my God, thank you so much for helping me out. During my time living with you, I've learned how much worms mean to you. You're the worm girl. So I've had my people cultivate one million worms just for you. Here they come. Here they come in a helicopter. Once Rosie gets settled in in Louisiana, she stops acting like a normal person like she did when she was in her home country and starts acting like a robot. I guess that's just like the direction that Demi was given of how you're supposed to act like an awkward princess. Just act like a robot. Carter goes in to bring Rosie some pizza and she's just sitting on the bed like a robot that has entered low power mode. And now it's time for them to go to high school? They tell Rosie with like two minutes notice that she's going to high school today. Don't be shy, Rosie. Grab whatever looks good. Mm. Boss is here. You coming? Where are we going? School. You're 16, you go to school. School. You know, for an international military agency, they're super lax about a lot of the rules and details. Oh yeah, go ahead and eat whatever you want. And oh, by the way, you are going to high school for the first time ever in about um, 30 seconds. <laughs> don't stand out or they're gonna kill you and your mom. It kind of seems like they don't give these girls any training on how to survive in their new habitat. Makes me actually a lot more worried for that girl they put in Antarctica. I really want an update on her at the end of the movie. She's just like frozen in a block of ice. They're like, yeah, we're still kind of working out the kinks of this program. So Sometimes it doesn't work out. Okay, Rosie, you're going to high school for the first time. Don't stand out. Would this be the queen? Obviously not, Ed. Maybe this is the queen. Well, technically no. Not yet, anyway. Great. She goes into the line at the cafeteria and she's like, I don't know what a hamburger is. And then she goes to sit down and eat the hamburger and she's like, I don't know how to eat a hamburger. This movie is mostly just Rosie sticking out like a sore thumb in a variety of fun and wacky ways because she's a princess and has never been to American high school. One day Carter tries to get Rosie to do her worm counting chore for her and she screws that up. Carter, what's Rosie doing in the bait shop? Chores. Dad. Rosie. I love that she's just laying perfectly still when they find her. She's just accepted her fate. She's like, I'm a worm now. I was a princess and now I'm a worm. The general will never find me here. She looks more comfortable with the worms than she did in the cafeteria. She's like, oh yeah, I'm used to this. Worm time? Yeah, we used to do this all the time back in the castle, dude. We would get wet and slimy and our bones would get all squishy and we'd just slither around in the mud like a princess. Carter and Rosie still aren't getting along. So Rosie decides maybe to smooth things over. She can cook a nice home cooked meal for Carter and her dad. This does not smooth things over. It roughens things. Under. What's all this? A proper dinner to thank you for helping me clean up the mess that I made in your shop of bugs. Arroz con pollo a la fiore. Wow. Yeah, that, that sounds kind of fancy. Why don't we just order pizza? Carter is so mean. This princess's mom might be dead. Eat her rice. Would you like a roll? You made ro rolls too. Yes. I had no idea. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, must be nice to play peasant for a day. Do you excuse me? Excuse me, I'm gonna go order a hit on this asshole. You do not know me, Carter. No kidding. I'm from a small island nation called Costa Luna. Never heard of it. It is not on most maps. It's not on most maps? If it's not even on maps, you can't really blame Carter for not knowing you, right? She's like, you don't know anything about me. How dare you not know my country that there is literally no record of existing. Also, how small is this country? Cause there's some pretty friggin' small countries out there and they're still on maps. Is there like a dozen people in this country? This country is just her, her mom, and then the general who's trying to kill both of them. It's very small, very unimportant to large countries, but very important to me. Yeah, I'm just sort of sentimental like that. The island nation that I was about to assume total control over is pretty important to me. One month before my coronation, our palace was attacked. Your father was very brave. Could have been braver. Later on, Rosie actually starts to stand out, but in a good way. They're at a bowling alley, and I guess even though Rosie didn't know what burgers or worms are because she's a princess, apparently she's a freak at bowling. <laughs> Is 
confusing as hell. How is she so good at bowling? Is this like her country's national pastime? Also, why is it such a big deal? She gets one strike, which is something that like most people who have gone bowling have done at least once in their life. And the whole bowling alley starts clapping for her. Eventually they're all like standing and clapping because she's doing such a great job. This means everything to them. Yes. Guys. <laughs> I think that girl just pulled a strike. My heavens, someone's finally done it. Do my eyes deceive me? How did you do that? Oh, I don't know, you just, I just throw the ball down the alley. Pretty straight. Whoa, 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 you threw that thing? Yeah, that's what bowling is. Isn't that dangerous? We've been at it for years, and you just come in here and know how to bowl on your first try? Yeah, that's not the hard part of bowling. Nobody's ever tried to throw the ball here before? Oh, one guy did. And he died. Oh. Ball landed on his head. Yeah, you're supposed to throw it forwards, not up. Okay. Hey guys! I'm gonna try to throw the ball too! Like that weird girl! Oh shit, alright! Amazing! Let's go! Let's see! Whoa. She bowls so well that the popular girls at school start like getting mad at her and being like, she's stealing our spotlight. She is getting really popular. The vote is on Monday. We can't let her get more popular than we are. This is truly a twist I did not expect in this movie. The princess is absolutely cracked, my lord. Rosie is so good at bowling and nothing else that she gets elected to be one of the three homecoming princesses. The social hierarchy at the school is insane. The school only wants one thing and it's fucking disgusting. I want to make a difference to do something more important with your life? Yes. You know, you're different than I thought a princess would be. Yeah, I sort of thought princesses all knew how to act normal and talk to other people like a human being. You're like a robot, and also you're like insane at bowling. You're like a robot that was designed to do nothing but bowl. Insert ball. Yeah, see, like, that definitely confirms my theory. The villain in this movie, aside from the evil general trying to kill her, is one of the popular girls who wants to be elected as the homecoming queen, which I feel like I'm a broken record saying this, but this is the plot to every Disney Channel movie. I don't know why in Disney Channel movies the homecoming court is such a big deal. I don't remember in high school people caring that much about it. I certainly don't remember it being grounds to help with a political assassination. That's right, the popular girls start helping the general. Princess Rosalinda? No way. This is a crazy twist. So the popular girls find out that Rosie is being hunted by a foreign militia and they're just gonna expose her anyway. They're like, oh, okay. That makes our problems way easier. We can just sort of get this foreign dignitary assassinated and then I'll be homecoming queen. They're pretty much gonna solve our problems for us. This is great. Also, what are the odds that this country is so small it's not even on maps? And yet the very first Spanish magazine this girl opens has like an entire story about the political goings on in this country. She's not who she says she is. She's Princessa Rosalinda. Good work, Brookie. Thanks, Chels. I have this is wild, dude. Imagine getting bullied so hard in high school that you got assassinated. It really puts things into perspective, man. I had it easy in high school. General Kane is forcing my mother into marriage. Father's never gonna let you go back. He'll never know. I have a duty to my people, and this is something that you'll never understand. I've loved living here in Louisiana. Okay, now I know the writers of this movie have never been to Louisiana. And I wish my life could be like this every day. You think my life as a princess is some fairy tale? Damn. Maybe I've been a little hard on monarchs. Here I thought they were just born unfathomably rich with unlimited power, but deep down they all just wanna live in rural Louisiana with this girl. If only they could like use their power to just do that. Anyway, it's time to go to homecoming. The girls get all dressed up in their beautiful dresses for homecoming and who better to deliver those dresses than the bus driver? from earlier in the movie, who we've seen like one time. Don't know why she's involved in all this. Ah yes, the ceremonial delivering of the homecoming dresses by the bus driver. How do I look, Dad? I think we have a problem. I may have to stop calling you pal. Why? What the fuck is that line supposed to mean? This is her dad. I may stop having to friend zone you. Dude, what the hell? I <laughs> 
What? So because of the popular girls, the general is going to come to the homecoming dance and try to steal Rosie and bring her back to the country where she's from. But Carter comes up with this plan to give him the old switcheroo. So he'll take Carter instead so that Rosie can enjoy her homecoming experience. I don't know why she doesn't just tell her dad who's literally in charge of protecting the princess, but either way, their plan does not work at all. And the only reason that they don't both get sent to a work farm somewhere is because Carter's dad ends up showing up anyway and saving the day. And they all live happily ever after. Rosie ends up becoming queen of her country. So can we get a little party for the bloodline maintaining the throne? Oh, let's go. That's what Papa likes to see. And that's the end of the movie. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this Disney Channel original experience. If you're new here and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to join Greg, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello, Greg. I'm glad you're here because I think I've just uncovered a pretty devious plot. There's this clip of paparazzi talking to this TikTok star, Ryan Halza, and there's something very off about it. I want you to take a look at it and tell me what you think. average person, this might look like your normal video of some child star lashing out at the paparazzi, right? Stealing his hat, telling him off, and rightfully so, right? I mean, leave the poor guy alone. It seems like they've been following him all day. It's only fair that he should have to pay the hat tax. The well-known Hollywood institution, the hat tax. But something about this video when I first saw it a few months ago did not seem right to me. For starters, the audio in this clip is super weird, right? Like... <laughs> The music and the dialogue are not mixed well. There's this loud ass camera sound effect going on the entire time. And at the end of the video, it's kind of hard to tell because you can't really see Ryan super well, but it almost seems like when he says, you follow me all day, I'm bound to mess with you sometimes. It almost kind of looks like he's actually not moving his mouth at all. I'm bound to mess with these which is a little suspicious, but not as suspicious as the fact that the paparazzi doesn't seem at all concerned about this disembodied voice. I don't think he's nearly as put off by it as he should be. That's terrifying. Ryan, you got any fun projects coming up? I will not stoop to answering these foolish queries. Whoa, hey man, how, how are you doing that? This petty annoyance you call a career ends today. <laughs> What the hell, dude? I didn't know you had telepathy. Every celebrity has telepathy. Ah, uh, put me down. No. Hey, where's my hat? Also, I love that the paparazzi says nothing for the entire video except unspecified cursing. <laughs> His immediate reaction to getting his hat playfully stolen is just to go off the fucking deep end, dude. Ha! Got your hat. Now you have to. Uh, now you have to stop following me. Ah! Fuck you! Fuck you! Bitch! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! It's just a joke. But by far the most damning evidence for this paparazzi video being staged is that, um. I don't know who Ryan Halsa is, and neither do you, and neither does anybody in the comments. Who is that? Bro, who is he? Who? Haha, <laughs> paparazzi have such sad lives, man. Yeah, that would suck to get your hat stolen, I agree. So I'm gonna go out on a limb here and guess that if TikTok, which is famous for being able to find the right audience for every video, can't find the right audience for this video, that Ryan Halsa is in fact not famous. Which would make the person filming him not a paparazzi and just a stalker. Like this is just a regular guy. You can't paparazzi a regular guy. Sir, the people want to know what's it like to be so normal? What the fuck? Who are you? So I was confused at first, but it seemed like it was posted by like an actual paparazzi account. This account called Hollywood Paparazzi. I'd never heard of it before, but I assumed it was just like, you know, something like the Hollywood fix. They just post paparazzi videos of influencers and stuff like that. So I clicked on it and lo and behold, it is just hundreds upon hundreds, just pages of videos exclusively about Ryan Halza and his brother Sammy Halza. It seems like they do this together. Just countless videos of them getting hounded by the paparazzi over and over. And to be honest, they don't handle it very well. Here's a video of Ryan Halza losing control on a paparazzi acting out like a spoiled brat. Holy shit, dude, Ryan Halza totally flipped out in that video. Someone get this spoiled brat in jail. Here's my impression of Ryan Halza flipping out. 
You know, man, I don't usually side with paparazzi. I don't. I think it's a pretty big invasion of privacy, but that was too far, Ryan. That was uncalled for. Apology with tears and blood now. It seems like their videos are designed with a few specific purposes in mind. One, they want you to think that they are famous. Two, they want you to be on their side right away. Like they want you to see the paparazzi as like invading their privacy and them having to deal with that right away. So your immediate reaction is to comment without even knowing who they are. Like, oh, come on, leave him alone. He doesn't deserve this. And to be fair, like I agree, you know, it doesn't make any sense for them to be followed by paparazzi. They're just normal guys. Okay, now this one is actually insane. So this one is of Ryan's brother, Sammy. It's called Sammy Halzer runs away from stalking paparazzi. shit, dude. That is terrifying. No wonder it seems like they hate the paparazzi so much in every video, dude. That would be so scary to be sprinting down the street, chased by a speeding car, trying to get a photo of you. And you're just a regular guy. That would be so confusing. Also, again, the audio in this one is super weird. I love how quietly the paparazzi is asking for a picture. He's borderline murmuring in a car like 50 yards away from a guy who's full on sprinting as he's cruising at 70. <laughs> I love this caption too, and the fact that it was supposedly posted by a paparazzi account. Sammy Halzer runs away from stalking paparazzi. The fact that even the paparazzi admits they were stalking him adds a whole extra creepy layer to this. Creepy paparazzi with sinister intentions chases Sammy Halzer down the street, trying to run him over. He gets off on watching him suffer. Okay, here's where their strategy kind of doesn't really make any sense to me. They're staging these videos, so they have the opportunity to be anybody in these videos. They could be the most perfect character, the most likable people. You know, they're introducing themselves to people for the first time in these videos. They have the opportunity to come across like saints, like dealing with the paparazzi with such grace. But instead, half the time, they're like attacking the paparazzi, all while wearing the most confusing outfit known to man. But not every video is like this. They actually do have some videos where instead of coming across as Hollywood's newest bad boys, they come across as Hollywood's newest sweetheart. Here's a video of him making the paparazzi's day by buying him a burrito. Yeah, I got you. I like when people respect my so. Oh, that's... That's so sweet. It's kind of like they mixed the classic paparazzi TikTok video with one of those TikToks where someone finds a stray dog and nurses it back to hell. Both because he's giving it food and also because the person he's helping like isn't talking the entire time. They're just completely silent for some reason. I like when people respect that myself. So. For as weird as Ryan and Sammy are in these videos, the paparazzi character is almost just as strange. They're either like loudly screaming and cursing at them uncontrollably or dead quiet. Hey buddy, I got you a little something. I hope that's okay. You know, I get followed around a lot by paparazzi, but you're always super respectful and you don't you don't get too close and ask really personal questions. So I just want to say thank you really. And anyway, yeah, enjoy that. And um, are you, are you okay? It's just, you're not saying anything, so I just, it's kind of strange. You haven't said a word. You're just smiling at me like that. It's kind of freaking me out, and you're just kind of glaring into my soul. I'm not sure if you're actually hearing anything that I'm saying, so. All right, well, I think I'll just get going. Again, enjoy the burrito. Thank you for being so professional, and Oh my God, what, why? Jesus, every word that's coming out of your mouth is a swear. Are you okay? Are you mad at me? Whoa, dude, you can't say that. Okay, now you're just blasting copyrighted music out of your mouth. I don't know how you're doing that, but I guess I am gonna have to bleep that in this video as well so I don't get copyright claims, so thank you. Okay, well, that's really impressive. I don't know how you're doing that. You're just making the beeping sound now. Ryan says, here I got you a burrito for not following me all day. But the paparazzi is right outside the Taco Bell that Ryan's coming out of. So it kind of seems like he was following him. Something's not adding up here. I think this might've just been some guy. Ryan sees a guy minding his own business in the parking lot and is like, hey man, thanks for being cool. Here's a burrito. I know you probably wanted to hound me and get my picture, but you didn't. So thank you. The guy doesn't respond and Ryan sort of like rubs his eyes like this and realizes he's talking to like the Ronald McDonald statue outside of a McDonald's. Oh shit, sorry, I thought you were someone else. It kind of seems like if this were real, the paparazzi would have had to been following him though. I feel like the real determining factor in whether Ryan is nice to a paparazzi or not is whether he's wearing a hat or not. A hat to Ryan Halza is like a red 
blanket to a bull. Probably not actually blankets. I don't know what they're called in the, in a matador fight. Probably an actual word for that. Bulls, man. They hate naps. Don't ever try to tuck a bull in. I've been keeping tabs on these guys for a while just because I think it's so interesting and I haven't seen anybody else talk about it. Some of these videos were posted back in like September of last year, but recently they've started branching out a little bit and getting more creative. For example, now they're not just doing fake paparazzi clips. They're now doing AI generated news clips about themselves. Justin Bieber has once again found himself in hot water after rising influencer Ryan Halsa was seen attacking paparazzi. I'm sorry, so Justin Bieber is under fire because Ryan Halsa attacked some guy? Man, I can't with this Justin Bieber guy, dude. Will he ever learn to start taking responsibility for this guy's actions? Pop stars, man. Witnesses say that the future musician and Instagram model became agitated when photographers began taking pictures of him. Additionally, did he call Ryan Halsa a future musician? Witnesses say that the future musician and Instagram model became agitated. Witnesses said they saw the model and future musician attacking the paparazzi? That's crazy, dude. I've never seen a human being attack another human being in such a way that I knew they were gonna start making music soon. That's pretty impressive. It turns out that Ryan Halsa actually is working on music. He posted this picture on his Instagram account of him playing a piano. It says, music loading, hashtag reasons dropping 2023. I like that his, his fingers aren't actually pressing down on the keys. He's like, look, I said I was gonna start making music soon. For now, I'm just touching the piano. Still trying to figure out how to make this thing make sound. I've been touching it a lot and I'm pretty close to figuring it out, I think. Reasons dropping in 2023. What if his first song drops and it's just a cover of a future song? Everyone's like, oh, that's what he meant by future musician. Okay, weird way to phrase that, I guess, but... Cool. Speaking of his Instagram, by the way, Ryan has 4.9 million followers on Instagram, which is crazy. Very impressive. Even more impressive is how many of those he gains at one time. He'll go some weeks where he gains 700,000 followers in one week, and then other weeks where he loses 300,000 followers in one week. It does look like people are not excited about his music, as he's been losing thousands of followers every day since he posted that. His Instagram is full of a lot of the kind of like influencer flexing you would expect from someone who is trying to look like a bigger deal than they are. But my favorite post on his Instagram has definitely got to be this one. It says, going to the top, had to check it out before I buy. You're gonna buy the Shark Week blimp? That's so cool. According to our reliable inside sources, Justin Bieber is upset with Logan Paul because of what he said about Bieber's new talent, Ryan Halsa, and how he handles the media in general. Watch this. Ryan Halsa, listen up. I get it. You get the hype and you think you're cool and hot shit. But to hit an innocent paparazzi in the face is next level disrespectful. And I am telling you, watch yourself, kid. Whoa, dude. Logan Paul's shoulder sounded really serious, man. Ryan, you better watch out. And I am telling you, watch yourself, kid. And I am telling you, watch yourself, kid. Oh no, dude. Robo Logan Paul is gonna come after you, Ryan. Look out. I've seen a couple comments under some of their videos that are like, guys, this is obviously not real. This is satire. It's just a joke. They're making fun of celebs, dude. Lighten up. And I would just like to go on record and say, I don't think it is, man. <laughs> I think these dudes are just trying to look famous. They have been posting on this Hollywood paparazzi account for like a year, at least. I can't even scroll to the bottom of it. I'm trying to scroll right now and it's taking forever. I just feel like if it was a joke, their posts would probably be a little bit funnier and uh, they'd be leaning into like the goofiness a little bit more. And they probably also wouldn't be spending so much money buying Instagram followers like it seems like they are, allegedly, in my opinion. And they also probably wouldn't have paid to have an article written about them by by a knockoff New York Times, in my opinion. So this article is from September of last year. It's called Ryan and Sammy Halza, America's Internet Idols and Beloved Hollywood Celebrities. This article is a really interesting read. You get a little bit of their background. You get to hear what they think about being so famous. There's also a bunch of weird phrases in here that make it sound like it was written by AI. Internet sensations, online fame, global stardom. The two brothers have seriously gained attraction and desire from fans all over the globe, racking millions of followers watching the two skyrocket into their stardom careers. Damn, dude, I can't wait until I skyrocket into my stardom career. That's actually the career I pursued in college. I was looking for a career in stardom. Ryan is best known for his comedy skits and lip-syncing videos on camera on Instagram. On camera? 
on Instagram? These dudes know how to do it different. Not too different is Sammy Halza, an American social media star with a strong fan base on Instagram. That's a funny way to describe someone's brother. Not too different is Sammy Halza, a similar genetic code. Oh yeah, and thank you for telling me that Sammy Halza is also an American social media star. I would have assumed that these two brothers are from different countries. Ryan and Sammy Halza said, if you want a career and to make a living from social media, it has to be on YouTube. Wait, they both said that? If you want a career and to make a living from social media, it has to be on YouTube. I guess, actually, if, if Ryan was saying it, he probably wouldn't be moving his mouth. With that being said, though, I still can't shake the feeling that they could have done this so much better. Ryan, Sammy, I dig what you guys are doing, okay? I think it's fun. It's an interesting way to get your name out there, to say the least. Really, the thing that's been bothering me the most is just that I have so many suggestions for how you guys could do this better. Which is why a few days ago, I packed a suitcase full of outfit changes and headed into the city of Chicago to film a total of eight fake paparazzi TikToks with my editor, Jake, who did a great job posing as a fake paparazzi. And I used these TikToks to experiment and craft a foolproof plan for you both to use to upgrade your fake paparazzi videos and get you guys the exposure you deserve. I want to show you all of the TikToks I created and the results that I got from them, but first, I want to talk about our sponsor. Hey Danny, the people want to know if you have any fun projects in the works. Oh yeah, I'm saying thank you to today's sponsor, SoFi. What? And you're going to want to stick around to find out how you can have a chance to win $10,000. Okay. If you don't know, SoFi is the all-in-one finance app helping you bank, borrow, and invest so you can get your money right. My wife Laura and I are expecting our first child this October, so it's super important to us that we have all of our finances in order before that happens. Which is why I love SoFi checking and savings. I can earn up to 4.2 2% APY on my savings, which is 10 times the national savings rate average. If you're new to high yield savings accounts, it's basically an account that makes your money work harder for you by giving you something back in interest. Your typical savings account at your local bank earns you an average of around 0.39% in interest, which is not good. With my SoFi high yield savings accounts, my savings earn me more in just five weeks than they would in an entire year in a big bank savings account. When you bank with SoFi, they hook it up, dude. With SoFi checking and savings, you get paid up to two days early, pay no account fees, and can cash in on up to $250 when you sign up for direct deposit. SoFi is legit. As a nationally chartered bank, they are subject to strict regulatory standards so you can be sure your money is safe. Your money is FDIC insured, plus you can access additional FDIC insurance up to $2 million on deposits through a seamless network of participating banks. They have live customer service seven days a week and you get access to SoFi financial planners at no additional cost. But here's the real kicker gang, SoFi and I are giving away $10,000. To enter, sign up for a SoFi checking and savings account right now using my link. Just click my link in the description or scan this QR code that's on the screen right now. You have to use my link to sign up, it is the only way to win. Sorry for rambling, I just got a little carried away, but thank you for being a nice and respectful paparazzi. <laughs> oh, I'm not a paparazzi. You're not? No, I don't know who you are. You just came up to me and told me to start filming you. Huh. So I guess what you're saying is thank you to SoFi for sponsoring this video? What? And thank you to you guys for checking out SoFi? No, that's not what I said. So like I said, I filmed eight TikToks. Now when it comes to the actual filming side, I think you guys do a pretty effective job. It's pretty clear that you've watched a lot of paparazzi videos so you kind of know how they're generally shot. The only thing that I would maybe change is having the paparazzi guy actually talk when he's supposed to be talking. I think that that would help a lot. Just like you guys with Hollywood paparazzi, I came up with my own fake paparazzi channel. I called mine Viral Vision. I thought that sounded a little bit more like a paparazzi channel that would focus on influencers as opposed to A-list celebrities. So I photoshopped a quick Viral Vision logo and as I was editing each TikTok, I just slapped that in the corner to add a little bit more legitimacy to each TikTok. I noticed that you guys did this in a few of your TikToks also, but inexplicably, instead of using the Hollywood paparazzi logo that you guys made, you just used the Hollywood Fixes logo. Don't do that. That's too confusing. So with all the TikToks filmed and edited, it was now time to create an account. One of the biggest cracks in this whole facade that you guys have created is that this TikTok account that is somehow the self-proclaimed number one TikTok paparazzi account only posts about you guys? That doesn't make any sense. That's so suspicious. And look, I get it. You guys are trying to portray yourselves as the biggest TikTokers in the world. But surely even you guys would have to admit that there are other TikTokers, right? 
You guys aren't the only TikTokers. Cause if you were, then I'd understand why they're so keen to photograph you, I guess. Seeing you guys in person would be like seeing Jeremy Renner of the Jeremy Renner app. But what I could see happening, if you guys really were this famous, is a fan account of yours scouring some channel like The Hollywood Fix and finding all of the videos that you guys are in and then posting that on their account. So I created a TikTok account called Viral Vision News. I uploaded all of the TikToks to that account privately, then re-downloaded them so they would have that little TikTok watermark on them. Then I deleted that account and made a new account called Greg Gonzalez 333. And that's where I posted all of the TikToks. This method also gives you the added benefit of captioning the videos from a fan's point of view. So you can basically caption the video and tell people how you want them to feel. The paparazzi's filming Danny from a distance? Wow, they should really leave him alone. Danny is a saint for dealing with this. Danny stealing the paparazzi's head and beating the shit out of him? He probably deserved it. Danny is such a saint for dealing with all this. Okay, so it's time to start posting the videos. The first two I posted were very normal paparazzi videos. The first one is just me being filmed from far away. And then the next one I staged to look like it was like my first ever interaction with a paparazzi. Yo, Danny, Danny, what, what do you got going on right now? What are you working on? Any big projects? What? You got any big projects right now? What is this? Is this paparazzi? Yeah, I just have YouTube videos. Is this real? Okay, I, it's just YouTube videos. Both I feel like pretty normal paparazzi videos you would expect to see from any up and coming celebrity. And without even moderating the comments at all or trying to do anything to convince people this was real, they snuck under the radar and people just took them completely at face value. He looks so confused laughing emoji. He has genuinely never looked more uncomfortable, not even in that picture of him awkwardly holding the mic at VidCon. And my favorite, who even is this guy? And then they came back later to say, sorry, that was messed up. He seems nice. I don't know what came over me. I'm so sorry. But I mean, from someone who doesn't know who you are, that's pretty much the exact reaction you would want. And on this creepy video from a distance, I had people defending me even more. This is weird, leave him alone. I love how he makes direct eye contact with your camera and you just keep filming him. Like, what the fuck? Now, in hindsight, I think I wouldn't have made up a new paparazzi channel name. I think I should have tried to just make these look like they were originally posted on like the Hollywood Fix or something. That way, if people get suspicious, and they try to go looking for the original clip, they'll find the Hollywood Fixes YouTube and TikTok channels that all have like thousands of videos each, and they'll hopefully just get overwhelmed and give up. On its own, I think this one small change could go a long way in making your paparazzi videos seem more real, especially if they're just like basic paparazzi videos like the two I just showed you. But we don't want just basic paparazzi videos, do we? We don't want you guys looking like just some random celebrities, right? No. We want to use these videos as an opportunity to endear you to the viewer. We want you you guys to look like Hollywood's newest darling, the sweethearts of showbiz. So the next day I upped the ante a little bit and I posted a video of me gifting the paparazzi a bean burrito from Taco Bell. I got you a little something. Oh. I just wanted to say thank you for being so nice and respectful all the time. I know it's, it's a weird job, but you're, you're one of the good ones and you're always respectful, so thank you. Thanks, man. I would recommend you space your videos out more. Multiple paparazzi clips of one celebrity being posted every day would be a lot for even like Selena Gomez. I was just trying to get this video done in a timely fashion. Sweetie Angel. Bro is a better person than me. I would look them straight in the eyes while eating it. Don't know him at all, but I'll respect him for that. Now, Ryan, Sammy. Now seems like a good time to tell you guys that we are actually more similar than you probably think. You see, amongst my viewers, I too have a reputation for trying to pull little tricks. That's right, there's no judgment here. I am a little trickster too. I have posted several videos on my YouTube channel of me trying to trick my audience and mine also never worked. So when the algorithm started picking these videos up and feeding them to my audience, I started getting a lot of comments from people skeptical about if these videos were real or not. But that is where my next trick comes in, guys. Comment moderation. The amount of comments you guys get that are like, who are these guys and these videos are clearly staged, are definitely not helping you guys look like A-listers. But let me put you onto this TikTok feature called Filter All Comments. All you have to do is just turn this sucker on and now every single comment left on your videos has to be approved by you before they can show up in your comment section. So now all you have to do is every once in a while just open up your TikTok app, scroll through the comments, approve the ones that make you look good, and delete the ones that think that they're fake. Why the fuck is this on my For You page? TikTok really thinks I give a fuck. 
I'm gonna delete that one. That one is very mean. Danny, have you lost your mind? Delete. Oh my God, he's so nice. Approve. So now, even though this video has been shown to 800,000 people, most of whom think this video is fake, the comment section still looks like this. I love him. Danny making it big time with paparazzi on him. What a real and genuine guy. So now people who think that the TikToks are real in the first place won't be swayed when they see comments saying that it's fake. And if someone does think that they're fake, when they go into the comment section to have their opinion validated, it won't be. The day after I posted that burrito TikTok is when I really let loose. I posted a bunch of TikToks and I got a little wilder with them. I was kind of inspired by all the lore in your guys' videos and I wanted to see how far I could push this. So you guys inspired these very heavily, so I hope you like them. Let me know what you guys think. Yo, Danny, are the rumors true? Cease these games, photo boy. I tire of your questions. Hey, Danny, I heard the channel's dying. What do you have to say about that? Stop, dude. You don't have any comment about the Are you the just gonna right follow now? me all day? Bro, just, I just, I'm just trying to get a I, comment. I'm asking you politely to stop. Do you want me? Do you want? Here, how about this? Whoa. How about this? You like that? Now I took your what hat. What in coronation? You get back here! No. You get back here, young man! You give my hat back! No. YouTuber and future missing person Danny Gonzalez is under fire after video surfaces of an alleged altercation between him and a paparazzi. Leave me the fuck alone! Fans are divided, some saying this is probably what the guy deserved, while others like Logan Paul were a bit more critical. Danny, I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna go Logan Paul mode on you. Now, let us enjoy the fruits of our labor. This video of me stealing the paparazzi's cowboy hat has 1.5 million views. And let's look at the comments. Very sad. Appropriate reaction, to be honest. He looks so good in that hat. This is Danny's turf now, yeehaw! So look at that, guys. Just a few quick changes you can make to your approach, and I think you'll be seeing dividends immediately. I do have to say, though, my biggest advice for you guys to make these seem real is to actually be famous. I do kind of have this suspicion that if you guys just use like half the time you spent making these fake paparazzi videos and just followed TikTok trends, that you would already have like 5 million followers on TikTok and then, and then who knows, you might not even need to fake the paparazzi videos. They might just come flocking. So yeah, good luck, heed my advice. Also, um, can I please be in one of your paparazzi videos? I can give you a good line for a video if you want. Here, like uh, something like, Ryan and Sammy Halza, you guys need to stop acting like you're better than all of us other YouTubers. Just because you have more followers than us and are making more money than us doesn't make you better. So yeah, if you want to stick that in a video, I look forward to seeing it. And for everyone else watching this, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new here and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to join Greg. On a more serious note, uh, thank you guys for all the love on my most recent Instagram post. If you didn't see, Laura and I are expecting our first child in October. We're both so excited and it's been really fun sharing that with you guys. So thank you for all the love. I will see you guys next time with a really interesting video. Uh, bye bye. What's up, Greg? I was not expecting to make a video today, but I've been getting so many DMs about this situation that I had to stop what I was doing. I had to put down the very important things that I was doing to sit down and make an emergency video. This is an emergency video, folks. Literally like 90% of my DMs have been about this for the past two days, so I had to come on here and let everybody know that Merge Mansion, the game whose ads I've made a few videos about, has gotten Pedro Pascal in an ad. I am making this video to let you all know that Pedro Pascal is in a Merge Mansion ad. Actually, he's in two. So you guys probably remember I made a video on this channel about Merge Mansion in the past, and then I actually made a second one on my second channel that probably not all of you seen when they got Kathy Bates to play the live action version of the grandma in their ads. If you don't know, Merge Mansion is like this home gardening fixer-upper type game where you, you inherit an old mansion, I think, and you're like upgrading it and you're doing gardening and stuff like that. But then also all of the ads have this like murder mystery element to them. And I don't know if the game has that in it. I still refuse to play the game. I'm not gonna play it. I don't want these ads to work on me, all right? My mind is an impenetrable fortress today, okay? I'm not falling for these ads. I see ads like this where a company is trying something fun and exciting, trying to shove their game down my throat, and I say, no, I'm not falling for this advertisement. I'm gonna see a commercial for Coca-Cola and then drive to the gas station and make an impulse purchase like a normal person. Anyway, I'll show you the first of the ads now. It's called A Twisted Game. Honestly, I don't even know where to start. 
on the surface, you've got this perfectly normal family. Okay, so this ad introduces a new character to the Merge Mansion lore, which I am a little bit familiar with. Honestly, more familiar than I would like. So what I know so far is that the granny has murdered somebody. I cannot figure out from the ads who she's murdered. And I don't think that it's even answered in these ads, honestly. She's murdered someone and then her granddaughter, who is the, the younger woman character in this game, is like slowly uncovering clues to what's going on. Now we've got Pedro Pascal in here and he's playing detective Tim Rockford and he's come in to try to crack the case open. On the surface, you've got this perfectly normal family. A young girl, her grandmother. You know, this is apple pie America. A girl and a grandma. That's apple pie America, baby. Nothing more American than a girl and her grandma. Sorry, Europeans. Sorry, anyone anywhere else in the world, actually. I don't know why I, I <laughs> singled out Europe. Sorry, anybody anywhere except for America. You can't relate to apple pie or grandmas. We made them up. And just like everything else in American culture, it is starting to kill people. Please help. It's like everybody is hiding something. There's no body. No smoking gun, just a lot of knives. See, this is where it loses me. The whole ad is framed as a trailer for a not real movie or TV show where Pedro Pascal is trying to figure out what's going on inside this home. I'm not sure what this lady is. I think it's like a, maybe a true crime podcast. So now we're not only getting like an investigation into the case, but we're also getting someone to comment on it. And then you guys are also getting someone to comment on both of those things. I like the true crime podcast element to it, honestly. It adds a fun little flair to it. What confuses me most is like, what do you mean there's no body? There's no body. Can you please explain to me what the crime is that you guys are trying to solve? Was someone murdered or not? Who was it? Just say it one time in one of the ads. Say who, who was murdered. No smoking gun, just a lot of knives. No murder weapons, unfortunately, just a shit ton of knives. So unfortunately, nothing suspicious has been found yet. Just a freakish obsession with knives and not cooking knives. These are knives that are sold to be weapons. There's no body, no smoking gun, just a lot of knives. The fact that she's like, there's no smoking guns, it's just knives, makes me think that by like, no body, she also means like, we can't find a body. The only thing we found is this skeleton. Super confusing. I'm worried that people are gonna think that I'm like, sponsored by Merge Mansion, by keep continuing to make videos about Merge Mansion. I'm not, okay? I'm not gonna play this game. I would be lying if I said that my curiosity wasn't piqued at least a little bit by this ad, because I'm like, who died? Who died? And how did they die? How is knives not evidence. There's knives everywhere. They find them on every service in this house. That's not evidence. Is the investigation to figure out if there even was a crime? Can you call 911 to be like, hey, a crime happened. Can you come figure out what it is? I don't know. I feel like I've been victim to some sort of injustice. I'm not sure what, but there's knives everywhere. Please come. That'd actually be an insane new genre of YouTube videos. You've heard of BuzzFeed Unsolved. How about BuzzFeed un? Found, unfound. We haven't even found the crime yet, let alone solve it. Okay, here's the next ad. It's called Think Like a Grandma. I was finally in, but still couldn't put the pieces together. What am I missing? Crime scene? Weapon? You're missing a crime, I think. <laughs> I still couldn't put the pieces together. What crime was I solving? What am I doing here? Who's this girl and this grandma? What is my job? To catch a grandma, you have to think like a grandma. Oh shit, okay, so that looks like some evidence there. A boiling pie. So maybe there was a crime committed, I admit it. Maybe somebody was murdered and then granny made a pie out of him. Good ol' apple pie America, you know? You got loving granddaughter, murderous grandma, and pie grandpa. Nothing more American than that, baby. God bless America. Think. Another thing you'll notice is that Kathy Bates is not the grandma anymore. I don't know who that lady is, but that's not Kathy Bates. So they, I guess, could not afford to hire Kathy Bates and Pedro Pascal at the same time, which would be a pretty crazy collab. I guess it's probably not called collabs when it's like a movie or an, an ad. But this must be super confusing for the detective too. He gets pictures of all of the suspects and the grandma looks like Kathy Bates and then he gets there and this is the grandma. He's like, okay, I was solving a murder, but now we have to solve like who you are. You shapeshifter. What are you? Think, what would grandma do? He doesn't know the crime yet. That's why he's saying, what would a grandma do? What sort of crimes would a grandma commit? 
tax evasion, turning her husband into a pie. Maybe they just live in a small town where literally nothing is going on. And so he's like, I'll put her, I'll put police tape up at some old lady's house and harass her. Sure, what the hell? Just try to figure out what crime she may have committed in her past. That's a cool little touch too, where it like turns into the video game graphics at the end there. And this is an homage to one of the earlier ads too that I covered in the first video. Anyway, either way, um, some pretty insane marketing. People have been talking about this nonstop, at least in my DMs. And I've seen people talking about it on Twitter too. And also this ad from four days ago has 7.4 million views, which is pretty crazy. All of their other ads have like maybe 20 to 60,000 views. So getting our boy Pedro in there really pushed the ad. Now, a lot of the discourse that I've seen around this ad, both in DMs and otherwise, have been people being like, there has to be something fishy going on. How did they get Pedro Pascal in their ad? How did this random shitty game get Pedro Pascal in their ad? For example, this TikTok. The next time someone asks me what my favorite conspiracy theory is, I'm gonna tell them that I think the Merge Mansion is a money laundering operation. Because how the fuck can they afford an ad with Pedro Pascal in this day and age, in this economy? Controversial opinion? They just, they, they do make that much money. <laughs> Even Candy Crush didn't have that kind of money. What is going on? Candy Crush for sure had that much money and Merge Mansion also for sure has that much money, dude. I don't, I hate to break it to you, but mobile games make a shit ton of money. How much money does Merge Mansion make? Currently the game earns more than $10 million per month from its players. So far the game has bagged more than $160 million. So they make $10 million a month. How much does... Pedro Pascal make. Okay, for The Last of Us, Variety reported that he earned $600,000 per episode. So I do hate to break it to you, but Merge Mansion definitely has enough money to hire Pedro Pascal without being a money laundering scheme, which a lot of people in the comments can attest to. This person said, listen, if you've played Merge Mansion and are addicted, you'll get it. They're constantly pushing buying things, but not enough for me to stop playing it. So they make a lot of money from their players and I'm Guessing based on the 7 million views they got on that ad by just posting it for free on YouTube Like they didn't even need to put it in the Super Bowl or anything Like I'm guessing that they're gonna get a good return on whatever investment. I mean he makes six hundred thousand dollars per episode of a TV show I'm guessing they probably paid him less than that for a one minute long YouTube video If you want a real conspiracy theory, here's a real conspiracy dude for the last of us He earned 4.5 million my conspiracy is that Pedro Pascal is actually a huge merge mansion fan and while he made $4.5 million from The Last of Us, he spent $4.6 million on Merge Mansion upgrades. He's in immense debt to Merge Mansion, to the grandma herself, perhaps even. And when Merge Mansion caught wind that Pedro Pascal is the owner of the account that owes them $4.6 million, they said, hey, listen, we'll wipe out all your debt for one measly little commercial. Actually, two measly little commercials. And what could Pedro say? But okay, fine, I'll do it. I bet he took the job because because it was funny. No, I bet they paid him. <laughs> I bet he took the job because they paid him a shit ton of money, honestly. I like that like people's only two theories are like, this is a money laundering scheme or he took it because he's funny. There's no way this game that makes hundreds of millions of dollars paid an actor to act. Danny Gonzalez is gonna have a field day with this. I mean, they're right, dude. I'm, I am over here having a field day. Woohoo!